Ooh, what's going on? What's going on? So yesterday, you know, these two guys had their weigh in and um, people today have been talking a lot about the weights um, as far as with um, Tyson Fury and also as far as Dante Wilder is concerned. Um, Dante Wilder, he came in at about 238 pounds. So 37 pounds, 38, 37 pounds. So I believe he's about seven pounds heavier um, than he was in the last fight. So people are like, okay, now with all this added, you know, weight on him, is it going to slow him down? Um, is it going to get him tired? You know, things of that nature. Um, I mean, as far as him, the weight that he's at right now is only seven pounds more than he was in the previous fight. That's the number one thing. And the number two thing is in the, in the last fight, he put that weight on pretty fast. He pretty much put that weight up from the Ortiz fight almost until the Tyson Fury fight, which was just a couple of months. You know, in this particular situation, um, he's he's it's, it's been a long time. I mean, people don't realize it. it's been almost two years, you know, since they fought last. So he's had a very, very, very long time to um, naturally put the weight on. And um, I believe it's just, you know, obviously he has top of the line nutrition's a nutritionist. Um, he's been also weightlifting, um, getting his strength up, um, which, you know, he has no choice. He has to do this man's about to face somebody that's what? 40, almost 40 pounds bigger than him. That's a massive difference. You know what I mean? Think about it. Everybody, you know, raves about uh, Rung, Rung Vasai or whatever his name is, right? Is that his name? Rung Vasai? Whatever. The Asian dude. You know, the one that's quote pound for pound number one. Yeah. Put him in there against Javante Tank Davis. At 135 pounds, 140 pounds. He still won't have the weighted disadvantage that Dante Wilder right now is going to have against Tyson Fury. And we all know what would happen to that boy if he went up against Javante Tank Davis in his next fight. Flatline city. So there's a lot that this man has to contend with when it comes to weight. So he needs to, he needs to have that strength. This is a person that's going to try to lean on him. It's going to push on him. It's going to try to make it a very physical fight. Tyson Fury makes it a very, very physical fight. He's grabbing onto you, pushing onto you, all kinds of things. A lot that you have to deal with. So you need to put yourself into a space where you're as strong as humanly possible going into that ring. Obviously, you don't want it to mess with you as far as your abilities are concerned, you're throwing punches, things of that nature, because having that weight on could make you a lot slower than they usually would be. You know, so that could be an issue. But it's been a very, very long time. So you're talking about this guy, you know, running 12, 13, 14, you know, 12, what's it called, rounds, 10 rounds, 8 rounds. Over and over and over and over again. Camp after camp after camp. He's probably had three camps, you know, for this fight. You know, he's probably had a good three camps. You know, so, you know, being in the ring, dealing with sparring partners. So I believe uh, due to that, I believe he'll be okay in that fight as far as the weight's concerned. I think he needs to have that weight. Kind of like Floyd Mayweather versus Maidana. In his second fight, Floyd came in a lot heavier than he was in the first fight. And he needed to. You know, he needed to. Because he was being thrown around like a damn rag doll in the first fight. You know, so he had to do that. And I believe in this type of situation, this is something that, you know, down to while it's a part of his game that he's, he needed. Especially when it comes to inside fighting, keeping this man off him. You know, and um, as far as, I think he's going to be fine. You know, um, and as far as Tyson Fury is concerned... People like, you know, he's almost like 280 pounds. Is he going to get tired? Is he going to be too fat? This and that. I don't believe so. I think he's going to be absolutely fine. You know, I'm, I'm not sitting here believing that this guy hasn't been training, hasn't been doing the things that he needs to do to be get, you know, to get ready for this fight. I believe he did fake having that, you know, not that 19. You don't get cured up that 19 in two days. You don't, you know, it doesn't happen. Okay. Worst case, best case scenario, you have to sit yourself in isolation for at least 10 days and you have to test negative at least for three days in a row. Got to do that. That's not what happened with them, okay? Sparring partners that quote supposed had it were able to fly right away to the UK, okay? And they said basically they didn't have it. So we know they didn't have it. Nobody else had it in his entire team except for basically for him, you know? And then they finally fell on, well, a jog bar had it. And then, like, the lowest hanging fruit, let's find... All these guys we said was good, had it and ended up not having it. Let's just find whoever else we can find. All the guys from the UFC who are training right next to him, none of them had it. So I don't believe that he had it. You know, I believe it's complete, utter BS. You know, but um, and I believe he needed that extra time to be ready for this fight. If this fight happened when it was supposed to happen, very short fight. 
I believed he was having issues in his camp, he would have been out of there and fast. But him having that extra time off, being able to go home, seeing his family, seeing his kids, his kid that was in the hospitals, out of the hospital, him having to, you know, clearing up all that, I'm sure clearing up all that, he got right back into training and did what he had to do. And I know people are saying, well, he didn't take off his shirt doing this way in. He didn't take off his shirt during the last wing. Before the last fight, he looked like complete dog-ish to me. You know, just blubber, just hanging off this dude. Looking like he has truck tires around his waist. We also, it didn't matter. You know, when it came to strength-wise, when it came to um, his um, endurance, everything, he was absolutely fine in that particular fight. Nothing wrong was going on with that guy. And he obviously had his performance. Now, we all believe that there were certain things that was going on in that performance. But, you know, regardless, that's over. We're here, you know, and we'll see who got what, you know, and who can do what when it pertain as it pertains to this particular fight. You know, um, gloves. I know they had a whole glove thing, too, you know, where it seems as if he's able, you know, Tyson Fury is wearing those super thin gloves again. And the Nevada Commission, if you're a fighter, I understand the money's high in Vegas. But I wouldn't fight in Vegas. That's that's as far as I'll go with that. I wouldn't fight in Vegas. It's not worth it. When they sometimes say the juice is not worth the squeeze, when it comes to Vegas and when it comes to that commission, the juice is not worth the squeeze. You know, so obviously Tyson Fury, they allow him to wear the same gloves. They cut the gloves up. You can see the horse hair, horse hair just all into the side. It's super thin. But they're saying, hey, we're going to allow him to wear those. So at least this time, down to Wilder understands that. And he's going into it understanding this person has these gloves. So he can't say, oh, we were jibbed, or we were fooled, or we were doofed, goofed, doofed, whatever they, what the word is. You can't say any of that stuff. You know, because you understand exactly what you're facing. And due to that, he decided that he's going to change to horsehair gloves too. You know, and that could be a catch-22. Long as he places his punches correctly and stays intelligent with that, he'll be fine. If he does a the whole weird stuff where he hits people in the back of the head... Like he used to do, the windmilling, he can hurt himself doing that. So he has to be very intelligent and smart with the way that he punches. He catch, the other side is, he catches Tyson Fury with those thin gloves, he's gone. That's just what it is. And he could get hurt real bad. He could get hurt real, real, real bad. You know, so, you know, you're still gambling either way. You know, you're gambling. You can go one way, you can go the other. You know, like I'd invested in a stock, you know. And this FDA thing was coming up, you know, if the FDA agreed to, you know, to use their, um, their, uh, their treatments, the stock was going to fly up. If they didn't, the stock was going to flow down. It's kind of a 50-50, you know. I rolled the dice on it, you know, put a lot of money in it. The FDA said we're good to go. And they agreed to it. So, obviously, shh, the stocks went up. And I made off crazy yesterday, you know. I'm feeling real good right now. But... This is the big one, you know what I mean? Is this particular bout, um, and I can't wait for it. Um, definitely want Dante Wilder to win this. Usually I'm like, oh man, best man winner, whatever it is. Nah, I want Dante Wilder to win this. And if you're an American, you should want Dante Wilder to win this too. It's like everybody in the UK clearly wants Tyson Fury to win this particular bout, you know? So I'm going with my fellow American, period. You know what I mean? So like we always said before, when it comes to him, we ride till the wheels fall off. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what happens, we riding with him. So, uh, we'll see what happens with the particular bout. Um, I believe they're both looking good. I believe they're both looking strong. Um, they're both looking super healthy, you know? And I both believe they're both going to be ready for this bout, you know? And we'll see what happens. Only a couple of hours left. But for now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.